Good morning, greater acquaintance, morning. church family, friends, those joining us on the internet today. I just want to say good morning and welcome and thank you for joining us for this morning's service. Before we move a step further, let's open up with a word of prayer. Amen. Father God, first I come to you to say thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for just touching us with the breath of life alone today, Father God. Thank you for your new mercies and your new grace today, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Ghost. Oh, I thank you for the comfort and the guidance that you give me. Oh, you did not leave us alone, but you left us with a friend, Father God. And I just want to say thank you, Father God. I thank you for this day, this new opportunity, Heavenly Father, to stand behind this holy death. Father God. Oh, I thank you, Father God. I ask you right now, the mighty, mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, that you remove Eric D. Lamore from this place, Father God, and let your spirit run wild and free within me, Father God. Oh, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that someone's life will be changed today by the word that's been given, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you would just continue to use me as your vessel, Father God, to do your good will today. So I just want to say thank you, Father God. Thank you for the new thing that you're going to do, not just in someone today, but in me today, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Oh, one for the Father, and one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Now, Father God, I pray that all things be done, decent in your order, led by spirit and truth, and that's your word. We pray this prayer to you, Father, in the mighty, mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Scripture reading for today will be coming from Joshua, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Once again, that's Joshua the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And when we all have it, can we please give us an amen? amen. All those who are capable of standing, please stand for God's word. Joshua, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Amen. Amen. Verse 1. And it came to pass, for Jabin, king of Asar, had heard those things that he sent to Jobab, king of Madan, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Asheph, and to the kings that were on the north of the mountains, and of the plains south of Chinneroth, and in the valley and in the borders of Dor on the west, and to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and to the Amurite and the Hittite and the Parasite and the Jebusite in the mountains, and to the Hivite under Hermron, Hermron, in the land of Mizpah. And they went out, they and all their hosts with them, much people, even as the sand that is upon the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots, very many. And when all these kings were met together, they came and pitched together at the waters of Moron to fight against Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them. For tomorrow, about this time, will I deliver uh -huh. them up all slain yes. before Israel. Yes. Thou shalt halt their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Maram suddenly, and they fell upon them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who smote them and chased them unto great Zidon, and unto Miseroth Maim, and unto the valley of Mizpah, eastward, and they smote them 
until they left them none remaining. And Joshua did unto them as the Lord bade him. He hoffed their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Amen. I just want to start by saying this month, here at Greater Acquaintance, we have had some powerful preaching. First Sunday, this pastor came and preached a sermon. Taste and see. And we found out that the Lord is mm, mm, good. Second Sunday, Reverend Jones preached the word. Stop killing the power. We have to stay connected to the power. And the power is our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, since we're connected to the power, which we should be, today we're going to preach about this enemy. Because once you connect it to the power, God has something for you. Well, come on, preacher. The enemy is not pleased with you being connected to the power. Mm. So we must be prepared to fight. To fight. Mm. So this morning's topic is, we have come to fight. Come on, preacher. Let me hear y'all say that with me. We have come to fight. Now that we on one accord, let's roll. Here we have Joshua, who has been given a responsibility of leading the children of Israel to the promised land. A little background. He came behind one of the greatest leaders, Moses, whom God has spoke face to face with. Can you imagine having to be behind a person like Moses? It's, it's, it's kind of like me right now. I had to come behind these great preachers, and, 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 it, and, it, and it's an expectation moving forward when you have to come behind greatness. Moses was able to lead Israel out of bondage, but not to the promised land. Right now, it's some people right here amongst us all, even myself, with a straight anointing on your life, a calling on your life that has not been discovered yet. Everybody here, when God created you, he created you with purpose. Regardless of what shifts and what turns you might have made, God still has a plan for you. All right. Amen. <clears throat> and the thing about this plan and this, this purpose and this calling is that nobody else can do it. This is your calling. Nobody can take your place. If they do, it's not going to go right because God did not ordain it. But for Joshua, the only way he could be successful in what God has anointed for him to do was to fight. So if you're going to reach the destiny God has for me and for you, we're going to have to fight. Too many people are just waiting for things to fall right into their lap. 
Let me tell you something. It's not going to happen. We waiting around for things to change, waiting around for things to turn around. It's not going to happen without you putting in some work. You have to fight. Tell your neighbor, we have come to fight. I want to drill that into our hands today. We have come to fight. Devil that took too much from us. Because see, all through the book of Joshua, he had battles. He had fights. Bitter fights to the end. With different kings, with different nations. Fight after fight, battle after battle. But he was winning. Because he had God on his side. In fact, I did a little research here. Joshua, in fact, had 31 fights and battles. He won 30, and the one that he lost, he went back and whooped him. You have to fight even after you've lost. Because anything in this life that's worth having is worth fighting for. Some of us don't understand. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the moment you said, I do, then we better say the devil started looking in your direction. Soon as you said yes, the devil said, You? No, you? All right. See, the devil know how to give you an eye. So you know on the street when somebody gives you an eye? Because I know in the streets, when I was in the streets and I give you an eye, ooh it's going to be all right for me. <laughs> See, the devil started to look in your direction. You know why he looked in your direction? Because he realized at that time that you have now become a threat to his kingdom. Come on, preacher. Yeah. Ain't it something? How the devil have more faith in you than you? <laughs> Come on now. You know what I'm saying? He's singing. He knew all. That looks like a fisher of men. Uh oh! This looks like somebody might tell a testimony to make another drunk stop drinking. Uh oh! Come on, the crack pipe is not out of their mouth. Oh! The devil is not pleased. See, that's why when you're getting close to your destiny, all kinds of things start to occur in your life. Because the devil is now at work. See, here in the scripture, Joshua was, was winning, totally connected to God, and the enemy didn't like it. So let me tell you here what happens. Verse 1, and it came to pass, when Jabin, king of Ezar, had heard, we're going to stop right there. We're going to stop right there. See, he had heard that Joshua was winning all these battles. I'm going to take y'all back a little bit. See, it's something about this word, this word had heard. See, if we go back to, to chapter 5, it says, it says in chapter 5, let me get it here. Whoop, whoop, wham, bam. Got it. So, it says right in verse 1, once again, and it came to pass when all the kings and the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan, westward of all the kings and the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the Jordan. They got spooked. Verse, verse 9, chapter 9, verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings were on this side of the Jordan of the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts and the great sea against the Lebanon, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Pesacites and the Hivites and the Jebusites heard, heard of these victories. Oh, take you to 10 now. 10 and 1. Now it came to pass. When the kings of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai. See, when people hear about you. Come on now. See what I'm saying? When they hear about you, it's something different that occurs. See, when you're doing something that is significant, that's when people are going to hear about you. You know what I'm saying? Because because that's why it's so much stress because of what they hear. They heard you don't smoke crack no more. 
They heard you don't drink at the clubs no more. They heard you ain't going out and partying no more. They heard you ain't cheating on your spouse no more. They heard these things. They heard something that happened, something that has completely transformed your life, and they don't like it. Mm. It's when they hear about you. See, I'm going to tell you something. Don't nobody talk about you, get at you, or try to defer you from what you got going on when you ain't on nothing. Come on, when you're in the same boat that they in, spiritually, financially, with their spouses, with their jobs, with their transportation, when you're all in the same boat together, it's nothing for them to talk about. It's not until you say yes to Jesus and not just say yes to Jesus, but the work and the power starts to transform you, renewing your mind, your spirit. You're not the old thing you used to be. Now they got something to talk about. Well, see, the thing is, we got to know that it's coming. We got to know what we need to do. See, they heard, they heard, they heard. Ain't nobody bother you and you ain't know nothing. <laughs> nobody would care about you, folks. Now, I'm going to take you right now here to verse 5. Because verse 5 says something that, that, that kind of kind of got me here, too, too, too. See, and when all these kings were met together. Check that out. All these kings had met together now. Now they're in the same vicinity. Let me tell you another thing. All these kings that met together... As I did my research, they were not even cool with one another. They, they had beef. They was from di completely different sides of the world. They had a beef with one another at once upon a time. But I'm going to tell you something. It's something about when you're doing something good in this life, where the people that you, that you thought were enemies, they'll all come together and meet at a place they have become friends just to all get together and come against you. They all, all go meet together. They see they can't do nothing with you individually. Well, they go try to dish you and work you hard collectively. There you go. Come on, preacher. Huh, something about people. They'll come together. You better say it again. Come against you. They'll all meet together. They met together by the water. They came from the east, the west, the north, the south. Over there with the BDs, over here with the GDs. They all came together. All of them. To come against you. See, when you're walking in Christ, we have to first be ready to fight. We got to know we have an adversary. And let me tell you something about him. When he dropped down from the heavens, he took a third of heaven with him. And I'm going to tell you something. They had babies too. So we have to watch our backs and know sometimes we're going to have to fight. Drama everywhere. People go loud you. People go talk to you. People go call your names, everything, but a child of God, you better be prepared. Don't be surprised when people talking about you. You can't do nothing about it. Start, woo, you have to get a peace among yourself. Yeah. Knowing that this is coming. So don't be surprised. Stuff on your job. Kids acting crazy. Spouse acting crazy. Don't be surprised. See, most of us get in that place where people don't like us. We'll be, oh, I don't know why they don't like me. I always come with snacks and I, I'm on time for the party and I'm this and I'm that. They don't care about that. <coughs> they care about what's in you. That anointing on you. That calling on your life. That's what they care about. Let me tell you about it. That's all they want from you. This devil don't come to do nothing but steal, kill, and destroy. But instead of crying, it's time to fight. Let them know when they on their way to you, you should be able to have something in you by this time because God that gave you the Holy Ghost. So now you got a little discernment. So when you see them coming at you, I don't know about you, but I get ready for something. And they don't know what's coming, boy, because I'm skinny and lean. I'm a mean machine. I'm coming to fight. Come on. Fight. Come on with it. 
I saw you coming around the corner. Last night he brought it to me in my sleep. I knew it was going to be you. I am ready to fight. I don't know about you. Y'all must ain't been through nothing or ain't going through nothing because I don't have no fighters in here with me. I'm going to fight by myself then. I have come to fight. Don't care what you say about me. You ain't got to like me. You ain't got to talk to me. You ain't got to do none of that because God is my friend anyways. Come on, preacher. See, we have to anticipate the fight. The walk ain't meant for nobody to like you. Walking in Christ ain't meant for nobody to be liking on you. They ain't gonna like you. Ain't bad drinks no more. You ain't got five on the crack no more. You ain't got a car to take to where they need to go no more. You ain't setting out food at your party being stupid no more. What you think? What? They don't like you. You better come to fight. <laughs> See, they came together in great numbers with horses and chariots. And remember, I want you to remember this. The children of Israel, they was on foot. They ain't had no chariots and horses. They was coming from, a, from, from walking 40 years. They got hooked up with Joshua now. Moses could do what they thought he could do. They was already complaining in the wilderness. Now they over here on, talking about the promised land. Story. You got to remember how people yeah, are. Yeah. They all sitting there thinking that ain't going to happen. I don't know about no promised land. They told me about the promised land to my grandma and then grandma dead. We still ain't made it. Come on. Come on, preacher. See, sometimes, saints, I don't care about those horses and those chariots. See, sometimes the odds go be against you. They go be against you. See, the odds could be against you, but it don't matter when you're serving a God that could do everything. See, the odds sometimes will be against you. It can be against you beating cancer. The doctor will say one thing and your body will say another. You know what I'm saying? The word says another. So you got to stand in the word. The odds can be against you. You know what I'm saying? Saying that you're too old to get married. The odds can be against you starting up that business. It might look funny. Your money look funny. But God don't need no money to bless. Where God, God got you, he's providing for you. Yes. If he's guiding you there, he's going to provide for you there. But you got to stay under his provision. Yes. Whew. And we'll fire it up here, y'all. Come on. See, I'm going to tell you something. God loves the underdog. He loves the underdog. See, when, every, when everybody's saying you can't, he's saying we can. All right. Not you can. We can. We can. It's a big difference. God loves to bless those who are completely counted out. Joshua got everybody on his heels. Everybody barking down Joshua back. They're trying to kill him, kill the children of Israel. We're trying to destroy him because this dude keep winning. <laughs> they come for the anointing that's on your life. Your anointing is so strong. The enemy will send all he has at you. But if God be for you, who could be against you? Oh, hallelujah for a God that said he'll never leave you or forsake you. Wherever he at you there, you are never alone when you're serving God. We, on, verse 6. Preach. Let's see why we can depend on God. Because God says in verse 6, he says, And the Lord said unto him, unto Joshua, See, the Lord said unto Joshua, don't you know that the Lord always has something to say? The thing is, you just got to be listening. Ah. Not looking at the army in front of you. Not looking at the thing in front of you. God is always speaking to us. I don't, you say, I, I'm not just talking about providing provision for you. I'm talking about providing a word for you. The Holy Ghost is meant to bring you to remembrance. So anytime you're in a situation and you're in Christ, he will bring a word to you. You just have to be listening. Yes, come on, say that again. Not looking at the army, but looking at the cross. The cross that saved you. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You gotta, at this point in this, you have to step up your faith. Sometimes we can't get stuck in that old faith that we had. We got to elevate in faith. We got to step up our faith according to our circumstances. That old faith ain't gonna get you through this new situation. God tells 
tells Joshua, first, not to be afraid. Ah. Do not be afraid, church. See, our problem sometimes is we're governed by fear. We'll never get to the place God is trying to take us to when we continue to get deterred by fear. In my walk, I'm learning one thing, and that's to attack my fears. I'm learning because fear is meant for you to go the other way. And what we don't know, usually the blessing is behind your fear. Fear, when you get scared, what you do? Run. But what if you should start it going towards, and I ain't telling y'all to walk up on the man with the gun. I want to be clear here. Y'all know what kind of fear I'm talking about. When you see it coming, you have to know what it is. See, fear is made to deter you. And I'm going to tell you like God told Joshua, do not be afraid. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. <laughs> Here is what I mean. Whatever battle it is you're facing, uh, come on now. it's not going to last long. Make it all right, all right. It ain't going to last long. I know it's hard to believe because of how it looks right now. I know it's hard to believe because of how it feels right now. But God also told Joshua this. About this time, tomorrow, I will deliver them slain. So look at the clock right now, and I got to keep it moving. At 12.27... Tomorrow, somebody in this house will see a breakthrough. If you believe it, somebody said, it says tomorrow, tomorrow, not next week, tomorrow, somebody will see a breakthrough. We're going to prophesy some things in somebody's life today. Tomorrow, there will be a change before 12, 27 in your life. Come on, preacher. That's all right. For some of us, it may be Tuesday. For some of us, it may be Wednesday. But I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be a turnaround in your situation. Somebody will give God the praise. I don't know who it is today, but this word is for all of us. Tomorrow, Come on. And I don't know about you, but God's credit is good with me. Yeah. Come on, preacher. All right. Make it, plain. it won't kill you. It won't destroy you. Because God's going to come in and make it happen. Yes, he is. So look what I'm telling you next. Look what he say next here. He said, I will deliver thee of all slain. Thou shalt hoof, hoof, hamstring. It's in another word. I believe it was an NIV. Hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. See, the horses and the chariots, they represent power. Come on, preacher. Break. Power. Break it down. Those loud chariots, those strong horses, and they only represented power is because Israel didn't have any. So this means with the, the hamstring, it's God said, I will give you the power to, to huff and hamstring their horses. This means if you, when you hamstring something, you, the horse, what it is, is you, 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 the, the back of the leg is a tendon back there. And what you do is you shush, you cut it. Say it with me, y'all. Shush. You shush, you cut it. That's why I call it the shush. And they just, uh, they buckle. And what happens is when they buckle, they lose all their strength and their power. That God is going to have you take the strength out of your enemies. All you got to do is hamstring them up and believe that God is going to do the rest. So all of your enemies out there that's coming against you, you better start looking at like horses and start hamstringing some people in your life. Because God didn't call us to be weak. He called us to be aggressive Christians. I ain't weak or feeble. Trying to tell you, God is good. God is good. Now we're gonna get back over here because we're coming to a close. See, now that you've got 
the, 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 the horses hamstringed up. God is on your side. He's told you. He'll slay them all. See, what some people do now is we start to do this. We start to go against what God has told us to do. God gave him a command on what was going to happen in his life. So as he gave him the command, it says here in verse 7, in verse 7, it states, So Joshua came and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Maram, Maram suddenly and fell upon them. Huh. See, these kings were at the water planning to attack Joshua. But, G but Joshua said, wait, I'm going to sit up here and wait for them to attack me. I know y'all come to whoop me. And I'm going to wait up here. I know I'm overweighed by these people. And I'm going to wait up here. No. Joshua says, you know what? I ain't on none of that. We got to fight. And we got to fight with aggression. See, you know what I'm saying? He didn't say none of that. He says, you know what? We ain't up here for no reason. We have come to fight. So what they did is instead of standing up there waiting on their enemies to come and attack them, they went down and got busy. And they went down and did exactly what the Lord said. The Lord said, go down there. I already gave you the approval to whoop them. Go down there and make my word be true. As already written, go whoop them, son. And he's telling you right now, anybody that's coming against you, Go and whoop them. Anybody that says something about you, go and whoop them. And you ain't got to whoop them with your fist. See, y'all mad somewhere else. You can whoop them with the word. Yeah. Aggressive type of fight. Yeah. See, yeah. and then what we do, instead of going and, and going and attack our enemies, we send out resumes <laughs> waiting on somebody to call you. We, we, you know, I'm going to tell you something, married couples. Don't wait on your wife to be the one to make amends. Why don't you go do something about it? You go be aggressive. Come home with the roses for no apparent reason. Why don't you go in and step in and say, baby, don't be mad at me no more. You got to be the aggressor. This is a fight we in. I don't care if it's a spiritual fight. I don't care if it's a fight in your home, a fight at your job, a fight with your children, a fight at the car lot, a fight with the mortgage company. You are in a fight. They all trying to come against you because it's only God that's for you. It's God that gives the increase. You have to continue to stay in the word of God and trust in the word of God and what it says. It says in the word, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lay not towards thy own understanding, but acknowledge him in all things and he will direct that path. That's it, brother. That's preaching. That's preaching. The doctor tell you, you're sick. The word says, by his stripes, I am healed. You got to fight. Do you want to sit there with cancer? No. What you got to do? Come against them with the word. I believe. And whatever you got coming behind it. And if it's coming from the word, it's okay. Because man don't live on bread alone. But from every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the living God. We ain't weak no more. No yellow back Christians. We have come to fight. Everything the devil has stole from you. Everything. I'm going to get my stuff back. I don't care where the wind may blow, what the season you may be in in your life. God is still there. God is waiting for you to say, Daddy, I'm ready to fight. He's ready for you. Oh, my God, I love the Lord that I serve. Because you know what? He'll give you the fighting utensils. He'll give you what you need. Because if he took you there, he's already, it was already predestinated. When you was in your mother's womb, he already knew what the battle was going to be. He just wanted to know if you was going to trust him. He already knew what the problem was going to be. That's why he's a provider. He already knew, Father God, that you might get sick. Oh, that's why he's a healer. He already knew. Woo wee See, he already knew. But what you need to know is that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Don't you know he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Oh, don't you know that you can do all, all things through Christ that strengthens you. Jesus has already won the fight. 
All you got to do is trust in J-E-S-U-S. All you got to do is look at the cross. All you got to know is that he woke up with all my, all, 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 all power and all my in his hands. Who you trust has the power. And he has given it to you. All you got to do is tap into it and use it. The only way you're going to tap into the spirit, the only way you're going to get this fed up about God is through experience. And when you go through experiences and you see how quick the word of God will take you, the Holy Spirit will make you a laugh. I can say it right here, right now. Every time I lose something in my house, I tell them, I ask them, have you asked the Holy Ghost? And they say no. And I say, well, ask the Holy Ghost. And yesterday, we was in there looking for something and I was talking to the Holy Ghost. See, y'all better talk back to God. See, y'all don't understand. He said his word would not return to him void, but accomplish everything it set forth to do. Father God, you said the Holy Ghost is my comfort and my God. You are not, you are not a liar, and I know that you won't make me look like what? Because I believe in the Holy Ghost. So, Father God, we're looking right now for this stapler, and I'm going to ask you right now in the name of Jesus to bring that stapler to fruition. I told her to trust in you, and you said, okay, trust in you. They're not towards our understanding, but acknowledge you. He'll direct that path. See, the thing is, y'all think something is too small for God. I don't think nothing too small. Can't think nothing too big. You just got to trust. I don't know about y'all, but I'm about to get out of here. But hey, you better tell your enemies. One more time, church. We have come to fight. Amen. 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 And if you ain't in the fight today, God is waiting for you. All you got to do is call upon the name Jesus. Read Romans, the 10th chapter, ah. verses 9 and 10. When you confess through thy mouth, oh, and believe in thy heart that Jesus is Lord. And he's been resurrected. And he's sitting at the right hand with God right now. Oh, Father God, won't you say that? And you are saved. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you think. You better pick up a Bible once you do it. And he's going to direct the path from there. I love you all. May God bless and keep you in Jesus, Jesus, matchless name. Amen, amen, amen.